Well, good morning. Good morning. We welcome those that are watching by screen today as well. Today we're observing the uh, All Saints Day, as you know, uh, October 31st, which is Halloween. It was also Reformation Day. And then the next day, which was Monday, was uh, All Saints Day. And so what, what we want to do is, excuse me, All Saints Day was Tuesday. What we want to do is we want to recognize those people today um, who have passed. And you'll notice actually within the prayers today, there's a little bit of a different, um, uh, there's a reading and then there's also some scripture verses. And so then we'll hear names as well too. And so we'll have you stand for those prayers. And they're Bible verses that we want to respond to as well too. But, uh, and then also too, we want to uh, uh, focus you in on the sermon hymn. We're singing an oldie but a goodie um, entitled, There is a Fountain Filled with Blood. You'll get the gist of all of the reasons why we're talking about blood today and why that song is appropriate for us today. But with that said, we welcome all of you. Pray uh, you, you're doing well. If you need help, our ushers in the back can help you. At this time, let's rise and greet those around us with a hand of fellowship and welcome. Come on, how are you doing? Are you enjoying? Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Let Israel be glad in his maker. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Let his faithful people rejoice in the honor and sing for joy. We sing for all this.
In the name of the Father who created us. In the name of the Son who redeemed us. In the name of the Holy Spirit who sanctified and keeps us in the one true faith. Amen. In today's epistle, John writes, See what kind of love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God, and yet we do not live our lives as if we are children of God. We confess. Help me, Lord, for I am in great need. My sins are too many to count. My burdens are too heavy to carry. I call out to you for mercy. I ask for your forgiveness, full and free, as the Father who loves me and sent Jesus to die for me. Forgive me of my sins by your Holy Spirit. Create in me a pure heart, that I may worship you in the company of all your saints. As your word has promised, bless me as your own. Amen. Blessed are the poor in heart, for they shall be see God. You have been blessed by Jesus with the purity of heart that comes from sins forgiven. Now we see God with eyes of faith, and one day we shall see him face to face. This is all because of his mercy which he has poured out upon you and all who trust in him. As your pastor, it is my privilege to announce this grace to you, and he has commanded. I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We would invite the children to come up for the children's message. Good morning. How are you both doing today? How are you doing today? Good. I'm doing good, too. Well, I've got a picture here. Check this picture out. Can you check this picture out? Can you tell me these are where people live? Okay. So who lives in an igloo? Uh, Eskimos who live up north. Yeah. Or well, what about here? Look, who lives in a castle? Yeah, prince and princesses, that's right, yeah. Who lives in a big skyscraper like that? People that live in the city, right? And then some people, they live in a travel camper or a tent. Some people live um, in a, a little cabin like this. We live in what? Houses, right? Single houses where everyone gets to live. Here's a question. Here's a question. Where does God live? He lives in a special place called heaven. Can you say that? Heaven. Heaven, right. And when people, when people die, they go to be with God in heaven. And the wonderful thing about that is we get to be there one day as well too. And so the wonderful thing is that we as God's people will one day all be together in a special place and guess who will be there with us? Jesus will. And so that's the wonder of it, isn't it? People live in different houses, but one day we'll all live together in Jesus' house. All right, let's fold our hands. Would you fold our hands? We'll say, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank, you for us, thank you for loving us and making us part of your family. Amen. 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 All right. So you may both be go, go sit down with your mama, okay? All right, well, thank you. We invite you to read along with our scripture lessons found in our bulletin. The first reading, today's first lesson from the Revelation um, of John, tells us about the sealing of the servants of God on their foreheads, that there are 12,000 from each of the tribes of Israel, adding up to 144,000, is seen as assurance that everyone chosen by God to be his children through faith in Jesus, his son, will be there. Not a one from every nation and from all tribes and peoples and languages will be missing. Praise God. We hear from Revelation 7. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God, and he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, 
Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed, 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from the tribe of Gad, 12,000 from the tribe of Asher, 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 from the tribe of Levi, 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, and 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out loud with a voice, loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God saying, amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever, amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, who are these clothed in white robes and from where had they come? I said to him, sir, you know, and he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading on all, this All Saints Day, the epistle brings us just the good news we need to hear, whether we are concerned about ourselves or thinking about departed loved ones. In the Heavenly Father's love for us in Jesus Christ, we are God's children here and now, and will be like him in the hereafter. It's good reason for us to purify ourselves as he is pure. 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is, and everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the Alleluia verse and the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel for today comes from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Beatitudes begin Matthew's account of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, his description of the life of the disciple. They seem paradoxical at times, but their being different from what we might expect seems to exactly be what we might exact expect in the surprising kingdom of our Lord. See, seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the poor in heart, for they shall see God. 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We sing our hymn, There is a Fountain Filled with Blood. Good morning and welcome. Let me turn this off for a minute. Let's pray, shall we? We pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, to hear your word and to find assurance that you are our lamb who sits upon the throne. And because of you, we have received our crown and will one day see you face to face. Amen. The hymn that I chose actually is entitled, There is a Fountain Filled with Blood. And one of the reasons why I chose that hymn was because it's a good imagery of the reading that we have from that we're looking at today from Revelation. And those are the words that we hear, and these are the words. Who are these, clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. He said to me, These are the ones who came out of the great tribulation, who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. 
You know, this weekend begins the holiday of blood. It's when men and women decide to take aim at the prized animal. They wait, they hunt, they kill, and then they finally eat it. By now, you realize that I'm talking about opening day of deer season, a sport I like. And yet, it's a day that we talk about blood. The cleaning of any animal produces a lot of blood. And why are we talking about blood is probably the next question you're asking yourselves. I want you to look at these Bible verses for a minute, and you'll recognize numbers of these. But the theme of Jesus' blood flows through a lot of Bible verses spread throughout the Old and the New Testament. These are some that I highlighted for us. You can see the blood highlighted in the red there, but I'd like to read it. It says, Jesus redeemed the church with his blood. From Acts 20, 28, shepherd of the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. We were redeemed, 1 Peter 1, 19 tells us, with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. And in him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, Ephesians 1, 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, Colossians 1, 14. You are worthy to take the scroll and open the seal, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe, tongue, and people, and nation. There's something that we sometimes miss. I mean, we focus a lot on Christ's suffering and death on the cross. We see that he died for us because of the sins that we committed. But yet we sometimes forget that all of this comes about because this redeemed Lamb of God now reigns eternal. That's something that we want to be mindful of today and gives us a picture that we have washed our robes in the blood of the Lamb. When we speak about Easter here in church and even in our own lives, we are talking about life. Then Jesus' death and life again. We know the victory that comes over Jesus' defeat of death. We also realize that he is the one who suffers for us. But the picture that we have in Revelation, as we read it in our worship today, is mindful of the very fact that Christ sits on the throne of God. And there he serves as a shepherd. Just recognize what the saints say there in Revelation for a minute. And therefore, they are before the throne of God and serving him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them in his presence. They shall neither hunger nor thirst. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb is in the midst of the throne and will be their shepherd. I think one of the stark pictures that we have in Scripture when I mean stark, I mean comforting, is that of God being the shepherd. You may remember that David was the one who penned those words in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. And even in other Psalms, we hear about God who will lead his people into his pastures. David must have one day been out fixing and watching the sheep. And there all of a sudden, he realized that sheep need a shepherd. And when he becomes king, he applies it to the people of Israel. I mean, if sheep don't have a shepherd, they are easily taken control of, destroyed. They sometimes will run and be easily eaten. It's no wonder then that the word of God, Psalm 100 tells us, we are God's people, the sheep of his pasture. And even Isaiah 53 tells us that we all like sheep have gone astray. I mean, if we think about sheep as God's people, then we need to look at ourselves for a moment. I mean, without God's care, without God's leading, where do we end up? Are we not threatened and attacked by his enemies? Sheep need a shepherd, and shepherds in ancient times knew their sheep, and their sheep knew them. So we are in need of help. 
We're helpless without God's care. We are there prone to be eaten by lions and wild animals. We too can get lost. We need a shepherd. And isn't that a wonderful thing then? That Revelation describes for us the lamb who sits upon the throne will be our shepherd. I mean, shepherds would care for their sheep. Jesus is the one who cares for us. Now, it's an interesting thing because you need to remember that in the Old Testament or the Old Covenant, when sins were forgiven, people would bring a sheep to be slaughtered or killed. Many times the, the blood was poured out and the meat was returned or the meat was sacrificed in the flames. But it was all to prepare people for the very fact that, yes, the lamb in the old covenant brought forgiveness, but it was only a foreshadowing of who Christ was. The weight of sin could be great. And the lamb was a sacrifice to show that God's lamb would be the one who would forgive his people. I mean, Jesus, we know, is the good shepherd, but he becomes the lamb of the sacrifice. John the Baptist said this when he sees Jesus for the first time in the Gospel of John. He says, look, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We recognize this in who Jesus is as the lamb. This artist has given a great picture of the fact that here Jesus is beaten, for the sins of the world. He's also the lamb who will be poured out for the sins. You see, this shepherd brings not just himself to the cross, and in his resurrection, he brings life eternal. We don't lose out on the sight that this lamb now sits upon the throne, and God's people then will cry out, and we see this in our next slide, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. You see, this is the picture in which John wants to bring to our minds when we read in chapter 7 that the saints of God are there in the presence of God's throne and the Lamb sits there and all His people surround Him in praise of what He has done and accomplished from every tribe, people, nation, and language, God's people are brought into His presence. You know, this is really part of the celebration of All Saints Day. We recognize that saints living and dead, dead according to us, but really alive before God's throne, are one and the same people, praising God and giving thanks for what He has done for us. This Lamb sacrificed himself for us. And because of that, we stand before the throne of God. The shepherd becomes the lamb, and now the lamb becomes the shepherd. Shepherds are always there for our protection. I mean, think about it for a minute, right? Jesus is our good shepherd. When we're hurting, is Jesus there for us? When we're struggling or lost or in disappointment, is Jesus not there for us? When we're diagnosed with illness or cancer, or we fail, is not Jesus there for us? You see, Easter isn't just that one-time celebration when we remember Christ on the cross and His resurrection. Revelation 7 reminds us that this Lamb is resurrected once and for all. And that is the place where we find our hope. Today we see that Jesus is not defeated, but He is King and Lord, may we find strength in our Savior's presence as we recognize those saints who have been His people, those that may have died are living with Him around His throne. Amen. Today, we want to rise and begin remind, be reminded of our responsive prayer. Since all Saints Day last year, members of Trinity have fallen asleep in Jesus. This morning, we give thanks to God for these brothers and sisters who share the Christian faith, 
We celebrate the forgiveness of sins that Christ gave to them through baptism, and we remember them as models in how we live our faith as baptized Christians. These passages of Scripture remind us why we confess that we believe in the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above and not on earthly things. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end, he will stand upon the earth. I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. For none of us lives to himself alone. And none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we belong to the Lord. So well. We live power, we belong to the Lord. In the book of Revelation, St. John wrote, I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, henceforth. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Let us remember with thanksgiving those who have gone before us with the sign of faith, for they were redeemed by God. He gave them new life through his Son in holy baptism. He nourished them in the company of his people at the, his holy table. And in his mercy and wisdom, he summoned them to his nearing presence so that they may rest in his blissful peace forever. Today we remember these saints of Trinity. We remember Clayton, Susie, Dolores, Stephen, Pam, Jimmy, Joyce, Bob, Gilbert, Annie, Donnie, David, and Orville. We remember our loved ones, not of this congregation, who have also fallen asleep in Jesus. And finally, we remember those who have no one to remember them. Those who die in infancy, the miscarried, the aborted, the stillborn. Those martyred for the sake of Christ. All who now rejoice with us. But on another shore and in greater light, a multitude which none can number. Let us pray. Almighty God, in whose glorious presence live all those departed in the Lord, and before whom all souls of the faithful who are delivered of the burden of the flesh are in joy and contentment. We give you hearty thanks for your loving kindness to all your servants who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labors. We humbly implore your mercy that we, together with all who have departed in the saving faith, may have our perfect consummation and bliss in both body and soul and in your eternal and everlasting glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray. God of heaven, we thank you, Lord, that in the midst of many things, you are our shepherd. You care for us and watch over us. Constantly be at our side, Lord, when we find life difficult. Help us to also find greener pastures in the lives we live. May we also find, Lord, your presence when we walk through deep valleys. Cover us with your care, O oh Lord, when we strain to, to know your presence. May our words speak to those yet who do not know you to have hearts that are open to your word. May we find peace in your presence. 
Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray especially for those that are in need of prayers listed in our bulletin. We pray especially for Doris, Al, Cullen, Francis, Alton, Georgia, Ronnie and Annie, Billy, Carl, Doris, Jean, Priscilla and Roger, Bonnie, Linda, Gail, Ruth, Debbie, C.W., Jennifer, Glenda, and Anne. We also pray for Al and Drew's family at the loss of their granddaughter's boyfriend to cancer. We pray that you be with her and comfort her and his family. We pray, Lord, for friends and family, for Mary, for Nathan, the Vasily family who are in Iran, for June and Wendy. We pray for those men that serve in our armed forces. We also pray, Lord, for the family of Ryan Callahan, a friend of the Hipshers. Be with all of these people, we pray. We are bold in praying the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we'll take our offerings and our tithes to the Lord. Would you please fill out your friendship, the friendship roster or book that's in your pew? Um, please fill that out. If there's any change of address, email, or um, phone number, please let us know. Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary, for our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death and thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you, this do in remembrance of me. And also after supper, he also took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them also, saying, Take and drink. This cup is new covenant in my blood, shed also for you for the remission of sins. This do also in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We sing.
we rise in thanksgiving for these gifts God gives. We sing. The Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. Shouts of thanks, hallelujah, hallelujah. O oh God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for this sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that we may be enabled to serve you constantly through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. For all the saints who from their labors rest, who thee by faith before the world confess, thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia. Alleluia. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending hymn is sing with all the saints in, in glory to the tune of Hymn of Joy. Of our guests, we welcome you this morning. If you're looking for a church home, please consider Trinity. If any of you should have any questions about the faith we profess, or even your own faith wall, I find it an honor to speak with you following our service at another time. We want to thank those for watching as well, too, and please connect with us through our Facebook, YouTube, or um, uh, fa uh, website. Uh, and also, too, we want to uh, invite you all, too, to stay for Bible class. Today, we're looking at what it means to be a witness and so we're looking at uh, the story of Acts and as the church grew. So we'd like to invite you to that too. And then soon we'll be posting our uh, Thanksgiving Eve, excuse me, our Thanksgiving service and then uh, Christmas Day and Christmas Eve. Just to let you know, as you know, Christmas Day and Christmas and New Year's Eve, Christmas Day, I'm getting them all mixed up, sorry. 
Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. So Christmas Eve falls on a Saturday, and then Christmas Day is Sunday. And then also with that, with New Year's Eve is Saturday, and then uh, New Year's Day follows on a Sunday. So there are some times that we've changed some things up for that, just to let you know. And then also, please remember, too, that the Thanksgiving service is set for Tuesday of that week and not Wednesday. Tuesday was chosen because more people probably would be able to come as people sometimes are away preparing or traveling on that Wednesday. So just to let you know that as well. So uh, with that said, if you have any questions, and then Advent services will also be posted as well too. So with that said, go and have a wonderful day. God's blessed us with some weather change, and so that's always good. Cooler weather would be nice, but you know, when it's in the 80s and it's in November, hey, you can't complain. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>